Uh, it's time for me to move away from the game of basketball. Westbrook stops at the one and goes down to a knee. Bitter labor dispute caused the cancellation of the playoffs. You don't know when he's going to be back. Two really serious concussions. Hello and welcome back to How To Fantasy Sports. In today's video what we're going to look at is how to draft in a snake draft format. Now we're not going to look at the particular players that you want to draft, but really just how to prepare for them and maybe some tips and strategies that you can use to better prepare yourself for those drafts. Now snake drafts are good because in theory what they're supposed to do is evenly distribute the players amongst all the team owners in your league. So that does make it a little bit more appealing and easier for the rookie players. But it also means that you don't really get a chance to get all the players that you want and you're more dependent on the draft position that you have to dictate the type of players that you'll get. So we always recommend that you stick with an auction style draft because they're also a lot more fun too. But there are still players that play with the snake draft and there's no reason that we can't develop a winning strategy for them. In general, the best way to prepare for a snake draft is to imagine that you have three drafting positions in your draft. The first position, the last position, and one position in the middle. And from there, try to draft a team from each of those positions, imagining the type of players that you would get around that time. Now, don't be generous and assume that, say, if you have the 23rd pick, that the 21st pick will drop to you. It's always best to plan for the players that come after your number. Now, it is possible that these players might fall to you on draft day, but it's more likely that if you're excited about getting them, chances are someone else is excited about them too. The players that fall on draft day are usually the ones that nobody wants, or at least not at that value. Now, who you take in each round will be decided on by your own personal preferences and rankings, and we'll look at those in a later video. But what you should be doing when preparing for your snake draft is looking at your positional rankings and identifying players that you want to pick up in the later rounds and slot those in to the three mock drafts that we were talking about earlier that you were planning for, the ones where you have the first, the last, and the middle draft position. This will help show you where you need to take them as well as what holes you still need to fill with the rest of your lineup in the other rounds. It's easier to target players that come at the end of your draft rather than the people that come at the beginning of your draft because typically the beginning of the draft players get picked or drafted according to their rankings at least for the first few rounds. So maybe a player might fall one or two spots or rise a few spots depending on personal preferences but you won't be able to truly target any one particular player in those earlier rounds, unlike you'll be able to target players that appear in the later rounds. So what are some of the tips that we can offer you for better preparing yourself for a snake draft? Well, number one, as always, practice. It's the most important thing to keep mock drafting. Give yourself different draft position so you can actually test to see if it is possible to draft the players that you want in the spots that you expect to draft them. Number two, know your opponents. Know who the players are and the teams are that they like as they'll move those players up in their rankings to ensure that they get those players. Number three, always know your league settings. It's very important that you understand how your players accumulate their points. A lot of the rankings that you'll see online or in newspapers, magazines, those rankings are based off a standard basic league setting. If you're playing in a league that is away from that traditional league setting, then you'll have to adjust your rankings to account for your different league settings. Number four, when you're preparing for your draft, in the early rounds, you should be targeting those players that don't have a lot of positional depth. That is, there's a great discrepancy between the higher ranked players and the lower ranked players. This will ensure that you don't fall behind all the other teams. In the middle of your draft, then you can draft some of your bench players and sleepers. And at the end of your draft, those are the ones that have a high positional depth. 
those are the ones that you don't have to worry about drafting because even if you get the worst option there, you're no worse off than one of your higher ranked ones. Number five, as we said earlier, it's very important that when you're imagining what round you can take your sleepers or your personal preferences in, you should always imagine them to go around earlier than they are based on their rankings. It's very likely that there's someone else out there in your league who wants the exact same players that you do. And that's about it. Pretty easy, right? Well, just because it's easy doesn't mean that you shouldn't be prepared as preparation will be the key to your success heading into any draft. So, Anyway, we hope you enjoyed the video and I hope you found some information that was useful to you. If you have any questions, you can email us at question at howtofantasysports.com. Otherwise, you can subscribe to this YouTube channel and pay attention for more videos to come in the future.